Well, good morning and welcome to this Easter Sunday service. It is a sheer delight that we uh, gather for the first time in a year together, at least 25 of us here in this room. We are gathering uh, here for uh, the abundance of caution so that we can move around a little more freely and safely in an area that has a little more cross ventilation. But welcome to you who are seated here and to you who are uh, participating in today's liturgy via the internet. We are live streaming for the first time, thanks to uh, Colleen Lamb and Brian Gunnerson and Tim Bry. And so uh, we're grateful for taking a step in a little different direction uh, when it comes to technology. Out of uh, an abundance of caution, we're going to ask you to remain masked, unless you're up here speaking, and to refrain from singing uh, the hymns and the Gloria and the doxology. Uh, these will be sung for us as we hymn along. Dear friends, the last words spoken on Friday were these. And the women who had followed him saw the tomb and how his body was laid, and they prepared ointments and spices. It is ours now to enter through the door of resurrection hope and to greet the light of a new day, even the light of the world. Will you stand as you are able? The light of the Christ rises in glory, overcoming the darkness of death. Christ is our light, alleluia. Alleluia. Please join me in the call to worship. In the steadfast love of God, in the presence that never leaves us, we have traveled together to this day of celebration. From isolation to common ground, from burial to empty grave, 
we have walked the road of sorrow. But we celebrate today an even deeper mystery, renewed hope in new life and rededication. Thanks be to God. Ours is the path from the tomb to resurrection. We will travel new paths beginning with this new day. Please join me in prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your wondrous birth means little unless we are born anew. Your death and sacrifice mean little unless we die to sin. Your resurrection means little if you are risen all. Raise and exalt us, both now and in the Lord. Where the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Our psalm today is Psalm number 118. We will read responsibly. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord is the right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is a marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our next reading is from Acts 10. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as the judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him 
receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Our gospel reading comes from John 20. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to Mary, She, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbinimi which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord and she told them that he had said these things to her. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for this affirmation of faith. Let us unite in this contemporary confession of faith. We believe in God who works in the hidden stillness of every dawn, who beckons us to visit the tomb of our fears or to discover the birth of hope. We believe in Jesus, the risen Christ, who leads us on every path, who calms our fears and invites us to walk and talk as children of the light. We believe in Holy Spirit, who gathers us in a kindred community, who works through the lame and the late, the wrinkled and the newborn, the hurting and the hopeful, who nudges our prayers 
kindles our longings and prompts our praise. We believed we are called Easter people who can live joyfully even in the midst of difficult realities. Thanks be to God. Amen. Malcolm Muggeridge, a dearly beloved English journalist and writer and teacher and devoted Christian, put into a simple sentence the mystery of resurrection hope. Muggeridge writes, Jesus audaciously transformed death from a door that used to slam into a door that opens to all who knock. The door of resurrection hope. We are still knocking and it is still opening. The word door, both in New Testament Greek and in English has at least three meanings. A door can be a literal, well, two and a half by six and a half foot object with a handle on it. And it also can be a simple opening in a, in a cave or in a tomb. But more suggestive still is a door that is a favorable time for accessing a possibility, a door. And it it is just like hope to make life itself an opening, a life so open-ended that death is simply another opening within the heart of God. The door of resurrection hope. Now, I'll admit it, you may be tired of hearing about doors. It is the principal metaphor that we've used to work our way through the Sundays of Lent. So on this Easter morning, consider with me how the door of resurrection hope once opened leads us to the well-known symbol of the egg. You can't be tired of eggs. I have read somewhere that over a billion eggs are dipped and dyed every Easter in America. And I'm not talking about the, the plastic ones you get at Michael's. Marty Peters shared with us at last week's coffee hour that she dipped and dyed a whole bunch of eggs when a youngster made an unexpected visit at their house. She scurried around and found all of the necessary ingredients. And as she talked about this, she just beamed. The door of resurrection hope opens us to the Easter egg. And for two good reasons. Jesus' final journey to Jerusalem brought him there to celebrate Passover. 
And you may know that one of the ritual foods arranged on everyone's Passover plate was a hard-boiled egg. Scholars suggest that somewhere in our ancestors' past, the egg came to symbolize the, the ritual sacrifice made at the temple. But after the temple was destroyed, the egg became, guess what? A mourner's reminder. And Easter, for us even now, even today, begins with mourning. Are we not, even as we are gathered here with excitement, are we not grieving for all that has taken place and happened to us and in spite of us over the last 12 months? Can we still see the faces of people who struggle, who suffer near and far? People in our families, people outside of our families, people in the heartland, people at the border, please. Red and yellow, black and white. We used to profess that, that all are precious in God's sight. And we were not singing about colorful Easter eggs. And maybe we still believe it. I don't know. Maybe we still want to believe it. Surely we all wish Opportunity and fairness and justice and hope and healing would come equally to all. But it doesn't. Not always. Sometimes. Thank God, many times. But not every time. I've been giving some thought to this. You have too. And what's come to me now is that or, O-R, may be our new default setting. Or and not and. Red or yellow. Black or white as if to admit that we simply cannot hold all as all anymore. Maybe we're too fractured. I played with F. Maybe we're too foggy. Maybe we're too, we're too fickle. Maybe we're too fractured to hold all as all anymore. You can blame it on whoever you want. We're big on blame these days. Oh boy, we're professional blamers. You can blame it on Bush too. You can blame it on Obama. You can blame it on Trump. You can blame it on Biden. Go on. You can blame it on whatever you want. Too much privilege. Too little privilege. Not enough, too much, overpaid executives, underpaid and undocumented workers. Untrained police, a few unprincipled police, all of them stressed out police. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, maybe we should just blame it on COVID. Until all are precious in God's sight means all are precious. Well, maybe we will have to live with or. Maybe for the time being, we are left with 
rotating our focus. Deciding on Monday, what we'll protest about on Friday. Maybe we'll have to rotate our commitments to smaller groups just because we can't handle it anymore. Not all as all. Maybe just smaller groups. And so we say Black Lives Matter. And Asian Lives Matter. Homeless lives matter. Children matter. Senior matter. Border people matter. Blue lives matter. Oh, yes, they do. This we believe, even if we can't handle with it and use and anymore. This we believe. On this Easter morning that begins with mourning. Now, there are a rather different stories to Easter, but all four of the gospel writers agree that in a, addition to a mourning of a death, everyone who visits the tomb are stunned that it is empty. Empty, as in incapable of burying life. Can't do it. And according to St. John, Mary from Magdala, her last name isn't Magdalene, she's from Magdala. Mary was not only stunned, but the first to be awakened by a voice. And what she hears, she shares with others. And her message indicates that Jesus will eventually meet them in Galilee, where this whole great adventure with him had started. And if they will meet him there, it will not be a meal for mourning. <laughs> now, this time next Easter, I'll go out on a limb here. By this time next Easter, God willing, we will be eating eggs in this room. All right? Now, I haven't heard an amen in 12 months. Anyone got an amen for that? Amen. Okay. We will be gathered here, God willing, a year from this Easter day, for an Easter Sunday brunch. And maybe even eating deviled eggs. Deviled eggs. Why not allow the door of resurrection to open onto a table of deviled eggs? You know, those spicy things with a little mustard and paprika. Oh, there still may be mourning next Easter. Next year, there still may be fear. There still may be plenty of disbelief. We may still be walking around stunned on occasion. But not because there is no hope. There will always be resurrection hope once we acknowledge it, once we enter through its door. Why? Because it is hope nearly all by itself that keeps us working on tasks that only hope can accomplish. Working to right wrongs, working to bring peace with justice, coming alongside others, working with, working for hope, even as it leads us on, even as it opens new doors.
the door of resurrection hope. It opens whenever we knock. And today it opens us onto the Easter egg. I'll close with telling you my favorite legend involving Mary of Magdala. If you're familiar with at least Eastern icons or iconography, you'll often see Mary of Magdala portrayed with a giant egg that is painted bright red. And it's based on the legend that goes something like this. On one occasion, she decides to pay a visit to the Roman emperor. She was going to give him an Easter egg. And she greets the emperor with these words, Christ has risen. And supposedly the emperor tells her that Christ can no more rise again than her egg can turn red. And guess what happens? The egg in her hand turns blood red, and she continues to preach Christ's resurrection to a stunned emperor. Doors are meant to open. Eggs are meant to be broken, peeled, and revealed. Even the plastic ones, especially if there's chocolate inside. And I think C.S. Lewis perhaps puts it best. It may be hard for an egg to turn into a bird writes Lewis. It would be a jolly sight harder for it to learn how to fly while remaining an egg. We are eggs at present, he continues. And we cannot go around on indefinitely being just ordinary decent eggs. We must hatch or go bad. Dear friends, happy Easter on this, our hatching day. Let us begin the process of breaking out and breaking free from all that might keep us from living full lives in Christ. Let the people say, Amen. Dear friends, will you pray with me? Well, holy God, we, your children, praise your name on this holy day as we find our joy in the resurrection. We, oh God, lift to you the many joys on our hearts that bring us so much peace and happiness 
as well as the concerns that weigh us down. God, we bring all these things to you this day as we say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh Lord, today we pray for each person participating in worship this morning, those in this room and those online. Lord, bless them. God, we give you thanks for all the gifts, for all the joys that they bring to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, Lord, as we reach out from ourselves, God, we look to our community. We pray for blessings on our faith community here in Port Angeles. We pray for our larger community on the peninsula. Oh God, as the sun shines, we give you thanks for new life, for new flowers, for new opportunities to start coming out safely to each other. We give you thanks for the ability for us to be distanced and still yet participating. God, help us together to continue as a community to care for one another, for our families, for our children, for our businesses, especially as we look into the spring and summer months. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh God, you call us out of the tomb of our fears into the world that you have created for us. We pray for our country. We give you thanks for the many things that we are doing as a society for one another, not just for ourselves. Help us to continue to put aside our fears and embrace new things as we continue as a people of old and young, of white and red and yellow and black and everything in between. Lord, help us to celebrate diversity without erasing it. May we continue to find listening ears and new ways to be your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And, oh God, on this beautiful day of resurrection, we pray for our world. Oh God, there is much that troubles us. There are many things on our hearts we would like to keep buried. But, God, you call out to us from our weeping. You call us to move, to share our story with others, to share your story with others. Lord, on this holy day and all those after it, may we find our hope in you, even when our light is weak. Let the world be your kingdom as we continue to build it in partnership with you and with one another and with this creation that you have given us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh God, we lay at your feet the joys that make us smile today, the traditions, the connection with our families and with our friends, and for the small things that remind us of your glory. And Lord, we lay at your feet those things that have kept us down giving you our concerns, God, we pick up again to share that light. And we pray as so many have prayed before us the words of that ancient prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 
Friends, as we continue to move along in our worship service this morning, we reach our time of response. And I, as always, I hope that that response is one of gratitude for the word that has been preached and shared and sung today. Thank you for those who have offered material offerings as you came in the door, and we'll pray over those as blessings in a moment. And I just take this moment to remind you that as we know Christ is risen, that you go out this day and continue to share your offerings with the world through your hands, through your hearts, through your gifts, and let God magnify your life to bless your loved ones and so many more. Let us pray a prayer of blessing as our offering is brought forward, and then we will sing our dox we will have our doxology sung. Oh holy God, we give you thanks for these blessings and for these folks in our community. Bless them that they may magnify your love into the world. Amen. we invite you to join with us in this holy liturgy of communion. For those present, you will find the elements uh, on or under your chair. Uh, for those at home, we hope that you have elements with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power of my oh, early, early in, in the morning, morning our, our song shall rise to thee. thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus the Christ. By your great mercy, you have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection from the dead. On a night long ago, he took bread, shared it with his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body, do this for my memory. When the supper had concluded, he took the cup and said, drink from this, this is my blood, do this for my memory. And so we remember, even as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Pour out your spirit on us and on these gifts, May they and we ourselves be living agents of your grace made real to all the world. For we pray in the power of the resurrected Lord, now and forever. Amen. 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 And amen. 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 The gifts of God given for you, feed on these in your heart with thanksgiving. Thank you. 
of salvation. And what heaven is for you. We invite you to partake. I know it's a little different, friends, but what a blessing to share in the Lord's meal with you. If you need any assistance, uh, and you can leave your things uh, at the end, we'll help clean them up for you, so don't worry. You can set them on the floor. Let us join in the post-communion prayer together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. In baptism we have died, and we have been raised with the Christ. So then let us rededicate ourselves to faithful service. We give you our promise to follow the Christ and to joyfully serve to his kingdom. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Good morning. 
Announcements are printed on the back of your bulletin, both in online and uh, this in-person bulletin. And I have typed in blue for you what should be the link to the meetings that are coming up. So if you don't receive an invitation, you have it. And these are the same every week. We don't change these. So uh, keep your bulletin or use your online bulletin as a hyperlink. Sometimes the hyperlinks work, sometimes they do not. Just copy exactly as it's written right there and you'll end up in the right place, is my hope. Uh, next Sunday, April 11th, the conference is arranged for an all-conference worship service online. So we're here today, Resurrection Sunday, and next week we're all online. On the 18th, we'll all be back here. No, we some of us will be back here. And we will then, on a regular basis, have a weekly in-person worship service. Um, I've routed the sign-up sheet for in-person worship. It goes through August 1st. So look at your calendars, make sure if you have a special Sunday that you wanna be here, that you get your name down early. It's a little bit of a zoo. People were canceling as late as three o'clock on Friday. And that's, that's just how people are. And we're just gonna keep working with it. And um, there's even a swap function. So if you need to change your mind, swap your Sundays out. Um, we anticipate that the numbers that we can have in person will increase and I'll change the sign-up sheet to reflect. So keep your eye on those sign-up sheets. And if you do not have computers, which I know some of you don't, I'm only a phone call away, call me. Um, for those of you worshiping in person, we do have offering plates at the table when you enter. For those who are worshiping online, please continue to send your um, offerings and pledges to support our ministries, either by mail, online, or PayPal. And lastly, but not least, there are two exits out of the back of the room here, and we would like to suggest that in an effort to keep six feet distance, that's really important, that immediately after the postlude has finished, that we would exit out one of the exits and we would visit outside. That um, we'll begin to clean up the room in here. And so um, visit in the fresh air. Thank you so much for attending online and in person. We invite you to rise as you are able to share in our benediction. New life has bloomed here. God's love has warmed us. Now, now the world calls us to go to spread that word. God's grace go with you. May it sustain you. To bring us together to praise God in him. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.